Hold on, I'm going to mute. Sorry, guys, I got some background noise. Uh, we're going to start our meeting uh, for the appointing authorities uh, to discuss the HR director. Uh, Barry, I'm going to turn it over to you now and uh, we can get started. I don't know where I, there, we are missing some participants. I'm not sure where. Yeah, uh, and can I add, um, Barry, before you got on, um, I mentioned Julie is unable to join us this morning. She has a conflict. There's a division of elections phone call that she needed to be on. Um, we really, there's five of you mentioned in the act. I would suggest that we wait until we have at least one other so that we can say we have three out of five of you for purposes of a quorum. Um, I, I would agree with that. Is um, Charles Thomas on the call? He is not yet. I did verify with his admin that he would be joining this morning. Do we know about Mike? I, I'm not sure about Mike. Okay. The, we're going to have staff call. The, um, on the link, the, the original link that I had, I had to go to the one that was that you'd emailed out this morning. Okay. So they may have an incorrect link to, um, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and resend it right now to Mike and to Charles and we'll see what happens. Barry, you said staff is reaching out to Brian. I, I I just texted both of them, just asking, are you getting up, getting on the call? Okay. I haven't heard back from either one. Oh, it looks like Mike's on. He's on as a participant. I'll promote him now. Oh, okay. Good. And there's Charles. Good. We got uh, it. Here we are. Okay. Good morning. Okay, hey, so, so we have Carlos, we have Mike Twitty, uh, Ken Berg, myself, Barry Burton. Uh, so that constitutes the majority, and Julie Marcus from Supervisor of Elections is unable to join us. Um, well, I'll just kick it off. Um, obviously, the, um, the Unified Personnel Act uh, provides for a process for appointment of the Director of Human Resources um, in the Act. It calls it Director of Personnel, but the um, act specifically designates appointing authorities um, to make recommendations to the um, Unified Personnel Board um, and make that appointment from among applicants recommended by us. Um, and so it's it's that panel, um, Karen after referred to as the HR director panel, uh, that makes recommendations to the personnel board. Uh, back and when they met on March the 5th, on the sequence of events, timing, uh, did not allow for a recommendation um, from the um, from our panel uh, to uh, make a recommendation regarding the HR director. Um, but we've had we have a chance to meet. Uh, they're going to be discussing it at their meeting tonight, and so we wanted to bring up and discuss whether or not we would make a recommendation that Mo Craney be appointed as the HR director on on an interim basis until such time as a permanent director is. Um, uh, reviewed by this panel and then ultimately um, a recommendation um, and applicants submitted to the personnel um, board. And that's what we're here to discuss. Barry, I'll go ahead and go, go first in the discussion. Um, I, I've worked with Mo before. Um, Mo's expertise is going into troubled areas and straightening them out. Um, she's done that for the county a couple times. Um, I know in animal services, um, we had troubles in animal services, but we say we, not under the clerk, but the bigger county issue. Um, and uh, matter of fact, we, did, we had an audit of them with our inspector general. That was a very severe audit. There was tremendous criticism from the community because there's advocacy groups which monitor what happens with animal services. Um, and Mo, although she had Certainly, she would never hold herself out as an animal services expert by any stretch of the imagination, um, was asked to be director there. And she get in there and she basically, be, because of her management style, uh, because of her demeanor, um, um, she was able to take a very troubled department um, and, and, and make it a very effective department. And I think what was quite a compliment to Mo in that example 
was that um, the advocacy groups, which were tremendously critical of the county, and Jewel remembers this, yeah. um, they spoke glowingly of, 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 of Mo and, and what she did. So, um, you know, boy, that was a heavy lift on her part. And I thought it brought out all her skills that, um, and attributes so well. Now, she's not an HR expert. Um, I think she'll acknowledge she's not an HR expert, but she brings to the table that she has knowledge of our county, the way um, uh, our uh, unified personnel system works, the unified personnel system rules. Uh, but more important than that, um, she has the ability to take a department which is troubled. And I think, at least from my, from my point of view, our HR department is troubled. When you have a 22% turnover rate in one year, when you have um, you know, the reviews that we sent in saying that there's deficiencies and it's not living up to our expectations, um, that doesn't mean there's bad people in that department, but they need a leader who can, can um, make them the most effective possible and put the right people in the right chairs. Um, and I think Mo does all of that. So I'm, I'm highly supportive of this recommendation. And I hope we not only, if we adopt that, not only send a letter to the personnel board indicating that, but we also reach out to our personnel board members who represent us and encourage them strongly to support this. Because I have a feeling that um, at tonight's meeting, this may be a not as easy a topic as, as we hope it would be by us just suggesting it. Now I'll shut up, did a lot of talking. And if you would like, I can just kind of briefly go over her resume. I know there's others probably listening in. Um, um, so Mo uh, carries, she has a bachelor's of science degree from Kent State University and master's in business administration from Kent State University. She was the assistant city manager um, in Dunedin from in 98 to nine or from 98 to 2006, interim city manager, right? Uh, during that time, then she came to the county as director of human and health and human services from 2006 to 2010. And then from 2010 to 2013, an assistant county administrator for Pinellas County overseeing EMS 911 Convention Center, economic development, then went out to animal services before she retired in 2015. So that's a brief synopsis of her resume. This is Mike. I, I would, I think she's a great fit. She's got that right balance of, of knowledge coupled with not being tainted by coming from within HR. Um, I think I think you need that third party oversight at this point to kind of ferret things out and see where we where we go moving forward. Charles? Carlos, I'm not sure if we could hear you. Yeah, you were speaking before and I, I was not able to hear anything from your microphone. Mm-mm. We are having technical difficulties. <laughs> well, um, I will tell you, I don't, I don't have the history like you guys have with mom. I have talked to her, um, you know, as through this process and, um, you know, she really talks about bringing people together. Um, and I think this is a time where, you know, improved communication and collaboration amongst, uh, HR, the appointed authorities and the unified personnel board is paramount. And so during this interim period, if she does nothing, but accomplish that, that would be time well served. Carlos, I think you, we, you're, the, the, the mute was taken off. Maybe we could hear you now. Why don't you test us? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Mike. Are you guys able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, Mike, okay. I can hear you. Is there if a way we can get Carlos to use forward. a phone number or something? Uh, we can probably give him a phone number to call in. Uh, give me one second here and I can... I think it was on the end, the meeting invite. And if I could maybe offer something to you all, obviously I'm not, you know, part of the group and certainly not here to, to take any action. Um, I did work with Mo for a number of years, uh, primarily when she was in positions of management. Um, some of the positions that Barry named off when he was reading from her resume. So I did have the opportunity, again, to work closely with her. And generally, those were on either human resources issues, again, from a management perspective, um, or ethics issues. And uh, I found her to, you know, be a high, highly ethical, highly effective manager. Um, so I can give you that input just from my personal experience with having worked with her. 
um, in the years that she was here. Um, I will also add while we're trying to get Carlos in, um, I put together a memo that you guys can use, that you all can use to send to the personnel board. You would just need to insert a name. Um, I did not, I did not phrase it in terms of, hey, you're legally obliged to take this recommendation. Um, you know, I think that no. us lawyers, we argue both sides. You know, I can come with you guys and say, hey, you're legally obliged. The board attorney will likely take another perspective. And then at the end of the day, you just have two legal opinions. However, I do think that the act is drafted in such a way that it really contemplates a very close working relationship between the personnel board and the various appointing authorities, you know, all of which you, you are. So it's really drafted more in a, um, hey, let's have a dialogue and we really want you to listen to our input. Uh, so it's drafted more, not from a legal perspective, but more from a, hey, we're all in this together. So we really want you to, to listen to what we have to say. And I'm going to go ahead right now and email that um, to all of you just to take a look at. So um, you can certainly let me know if you feel like any of the dialogue that we've had here today is not properly reflected or if you wish there to be any changes. It's brief. It's one page. Carlos, can we hear you yet? I think I have it set up now. Yay. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know Mo both professionally and personally, and I think that she is a very talented and uh, accomplished lady. I'm not real comfortable with the fact that she doesn't have any HR experience. And given that we're talking in interim and looking for a new director to reorganize and uh, revamp that group, I'm just not convinced that's the right move. At this point, Jack at least has the technical skills. And these have been difficult times and I've not seen any major missteps on the other hand, I have not had a tremendous amount of interaction with Jack during this this time. Just one voice. No, oh, I it's a fair it's a fair comment. Um, I've actually not had any any issues with Jack. We have obviously a lot going on. Of course, the pandemic kind of um, changed a lot of things. <laughs> um, so you know, it's we're not we're not in the same mode. Um, but I, I think Jack is doing a fine job in terms of um, managing, you know, technical process issues within HR. I'm not sure he's the person to help bridge the communication gap between HR um, and the personnel board and the appointing authorities. Um, and, and I think that's the next piece that um, a probably a, somebody from the outside uh, like a Mo could help um, bring everybody together to accomplish that. And, and I, again, I don't, and I, nothing against Jack, but I, I just don't think he's the guy to accomplish that. Fair enough. I'm not dead set against this. I just have some concerns about it. Mm-hmm. Ballot? Again, kind of, kind of going back to the legal issue, like I said, we could argue that, <clears throat> you know, we could have a legal debate of the merits of whether you all are a formal recommending body or not. Um, taking this from the perspective that you are, uh, you are a sunshine body, which is why we are gathered here today. So uh, to make a recommendation, you would need to take some sort of uh, a formal action uh, to make that recommendation. So just keep that in mind as you, uh, you know, continue to discuss and perhaps deliberate. We well, just to get things moving, and I know, um, you know, I, I respect Carlos's hesitation there. Um, I do think this is the better direction to go to, um, though. To, I, I think when you have a troubled department, an outsider oftentimes is needed, um, and um, it may not be ideal because without the HR. Although, you know, we we all have HR experience, and by being head of <laughs> very big agencies, you know, and, and health and human services, and she was ahead of that. It's a very big and complicated um, agency, which involves lots of HR issues. So it's, she's not like she's devoid of HR issues. She's just never been in a, a unique HR role, which dedicated. So I, I just think the intangibles and tangibles that she brings to the table are so strong. I'll go ahead and make the motion that we recommend to the uh, Unified Personnel Board to um, uh, appoint 
uh, Mo Freeney as the uh, director um, for the time period needed until a permanent director could be appointed. Ken, before we vote, we're going to want to take public comment. Uh, sure. I, I think I before you guys. Your second, Barry. Well, I'll, I'll second that motion. All right, at this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment uh, before they vote on this item, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand in the Zoom application or hit star nine if you're on the telephone line. And Ken, Barry, I'm not seeing anybody that wishes to comment before vote, so I think you guys are clear. Any other further discussion? All right, um, then all in favor of the motion, uh, signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I think that's three and a half. Uh, <laughs> 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 I got you, Carlos. Four, four, oh, yes. And I understand, I understand your hesitation. And, and I, 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 that's the reason I said the comment. I think, I think Jack's really tried to step up you know, on that, on that technical side. And I think we do owe him uh, an explanation as a, we do appreciate, um, you know, what he's been trying to accomplish. Um, so that motion passes. Um, so that's the end of that. That's the item that we had for today. I will tell you that the, um, the uh, search consultant is continuing their work. Um, so I think they've gotten in a lot of resumes. They haven't screened them down or anything yet. So I don't have anything to report to you. Uh, once we have that, we'll, we'll reconvene the larger group and discuss that uh, once I hear more from them. But that should be soon, I, I think, in the next couple weeks. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I'm sure that Mo will uh, make good use of Jack's technical skills and, mm -hmm. and work together with the group and do a fine job. I'm good, Gary. Great. Okay. I agree with that, Carlos. I think Jack's, you know, has a definite role in our HR department. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else to discuss? Oh, I, I, okay. I know this is, <laughs> but but while we're on this um, all together here, because we don't get this chance, and I is is Carlos, can you talk about the reopening of your offices and especially um, the. Uh, taking people's temperatures outside the building. And, 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 and I bring this up, you know, just because um, I'm sure the question will come up if, if one of us is doing it, why aren't we all doing this um, it, of, of people coming into the government building? So, and, and, and that was in the article and, and I, it was the article was confusing for Hillsborough, Pasco and Pinellas and kept going between them. So it was hard for me to figure out what was Pinellas, what was Pasco, what was Hillsborough doing here? But I'm sure I'm gonna get employee questions because. I always do is like, well, if the tax collector screening people, why aren't we doing that for folks coming into the courthouse, which we're seeing. So if you could just kind of help us figure that out, is this appropriate for us to talk about this, Jewel? Well, this is really, I don't care if it's sunshine or not sunshine. I'm just yeah. curious what we're doing. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think this is absolutely fair. I mean, this is nothing that you all take action on as a group. And I'm actually curious to hear what you all have to say. Barry, I reached out to um, Rodney this morning because I kind of wanted to hear what you all were thinking under um, uh -huh. your agency as far as reopening. So I'd be very interested in hearing what you guys have to say. And actually, I plan to kind of reach out to each of you guys because I want to make sure that whatever we decide in the county attorney's office, we're meeting the needs of you all because, of course, you all are our clients. So I'm eager to hear it. No problem having that discussion and, here. And, and I know I asked Carly, but Jewel, I have the same question. Even like with people if we have a domestic violence injunction what right do we have the person to say well gosh your temperature is 90 we, we arbitrarily have determined 99 or two you know 100s and right. you can't come in this building you know it's like gosh we I, I have concerns over that too which I'm not sure how they get addressed but anyway Carlos tell us what you're doing please and actually we're not using temperature sensors at this point okay. we're we're collecting data on that uh, we're interested in seeing how that works out in other counties, but I don't have that equipment. Okay. Well, so we have talked about that, um, and we certainly can get all of the appointing authorities together, um, you know, and and we have and talk about, you know, how do we reopen? Um, and I think that is the next phase and something we should be talking about. We're we've been talking with our departments about what that next phase looks like. What people would we bring back? How do we operate? Do we operate a little differently? Um, 
you know, and, um, and, and be safe, the social distancing and things like that. So, you know, from our perspective, we are looking at that. It's very problematic because you, you need to have a nurse to be able to take temperature. We're doing that here at the emergency operations center. We're, we're doing it for a very specific reason. If I lose, you know, half of the 911 staff, I, I, I literally cannot, you know, um, uh, answer emergency calls. So there's, there is a specific reason. So we've locked down that building um, in, that, in that respect. Um, we're not doing it in other parts of the county. Um, so that, and, and there have been departments that have asked, you know, for that, but it would be very, very resource intensive yep. um, and for, in order to be able to do something in the, in the many, many, many locations um, that we have. But well, it, that is something. Legal issues too with access again. How, how do you, right. what, what do you happens when, you know, the, this is not a private business. Do we have yeah. the right to turn people away at certain, you know, you know, and what is, Anyway, I just you're yeah. right. This at my section over here I, again, the building that, that I've been living in for the last six weeks. Um, you know, it's not a public building, so nobody has a right to come in. They don't. We don't have public transactions, so it's very, very different than coming into the courthouse or you know, or um, you know, the tax collector's office or some or something like that. Um, I, I do think it's a good idea for us to share our thoughts about you know, not just what we're doing today, which we have, but um, what happens next? You know, what happens two months from now? Um, you know, or what and what everybody's thinking on that. Yeah, I, I would I would very much like to have that conversation and hear what everybody's doing, because, um, of course, we really support all of you. Uh, so I would very much like to have a conversation like that. I could tell you a little bit more about what we are doing. Um, we have two security guards at Mid County. And as we open up the additional offices, once the uh, glass shielding goes into place, there will be two guards at those locations as well. They're screening customers before they come in, asking if they have a fever or experience any COVID uh, type of symptoms. And if they um, answer that they're, they're fine, then they will let them come in. Right now, we are serving only Pinellas County residents by appointment only. We can do anything right now with the exception of uh, driving tests, and we're not even sure how we're gonna ever, well, not ever, but how we will conduct driving tests in the future. The current plan is uh, to try and monitor those remotely and with the driving ranges that will come available in North and South County, we think that that will facilitate that. We just need to get the state's buy-in to uh, do a remote observation of the testing as opposed to being in the car. Hmm. We uh, have not yet reopened CDL, and the reason for that is that it's kind of a hands-on transaction in the fingerprinting. And until we get a little bit more guidance from the Department of Ag, who's not opening at all before May 17, not real sure how we're going to do that. But um, so right now we're just not. And the only other piece would be hazmat testing for commercial driver's licenses. And again, because of the fingerprinting issue. Other than that, we can do anything by appointment. Any of the other transactions that we handle. What we are not doing is we're not doing simple renewals. Those can be accomplished on the internet, by the mail. We have drop boxes, and by the end of the month, I should have kiosks in two public locations in the lobbies of all of my buildings. So I don't see a reason to do those types of renewals. There'll be other options. And that should make it a little more doable in terms of capacity in, in just doing um, by appointment transactions for the other business that is going to take a while to catch up on. Uh -huh. At any rate, that's today's plan. Things could change. <laughs> <laughs> we did open this morning at Mid County. Okay. Uh, you know, did, didn't go 100% smooth, but right now we're serving <laughs> customers well. We had about 30 people outside the office when we opened. About 20 of them didn't have appointments. So clearly the message is 
not 100% clear. Uh -huh. Hillsborough County opened two offices by appointment only Monday. Uh, Pasco County just opened, they just opened up. Uh, no appointments necessary, just show up. And I saw a picture earlier this week of 100 people standing outside of one of Pasco County tax collector offices in a line waiting to get in. I, I'm not, I don't think that's a, a terrific plan for Pinellas County. I'm not going to say what's good or bad for Pasco. That's Mike's decision. Uh, Mike Fasano, and um, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the path we're taking right now. And I, I can tell you, my folks are actually excited about having the opportunity to serve the public again safely. All right. Are you rotating fifty percent of your staff in it in uh, Mid County in Phase One of this? Um, and, and that's to, um, not infect an entire office at once, just in case it happens. Uh, but phase two of the operations will be to have everybody back in on a full schedule. And I'm hoping to be able to do that by the end of the month or the beginning of June. Uh, not, nothing really written in stone just yet, Mike. But yeah. But and so far, this is working pretty well. Okay. And just so everybody knows, you know, we, we've got two seats in Mid County and Carlos's facility there um, to take homestead apps. And we have not uh, returned those, those two staff members back yet. We're, we're past the homestead deadline. We still have late files, but we've really been able to manage it with um, online use of, of Carlos's Dropbox there at Mid County. Um, and, and then, you know, over the phone. And so it's, it's really worked out to where we really don't have a real need to be public facing at this moment, the time of year, we're more focused on valuation for our, for, um, estimates and, and exemption approvals and denials. So, you know, we have a June one and a July one, uh, deliverables. So we're really focused on that. So I, I'm going to kind of slow roll my people back in, it'll probably be front counter people that will come in first and the first ones will come into mid County. That will be the first spot, but we haven't determined exactly when that's going to be. That could still be a couple of weeks out before we actually seat them there. And then we're, we're talking about a three phased uh, implementation of our staff, putting the most vulnerable and those that have childcare issues kind of in that last phase and, and kind of ramp up and look at which departments are really working efficiently from home right now, which really is our appraisers. And because they have those deliverables in June and July, I really don't want to start transitioning them back in and lose valuable time, you know, um, pull up, pulling them out of where they're, they're actually working pretty well. So they may be the last ones to come back in. And I may not even bring our South County people in at all until the new facility opens in early July and just bring them straight into the new facility. Speaking of South County, that's one of the decisions we've not made yet, whether or not we bring back on old South County or mm -hmm. wait until new South County is ready and bring it up rather than try and get the public uh, informed right. about, okay, go to the old location and now in three weeks go to the new location. Right. Um, do we set up equipment and everything? Uh -huh. And we're also in the middle of a state refresh of equipment. We think if the state actually gives us the equipment, mm -hmm. kind, of hard, kind of hard to get a firm answer there as well. <laughs> you, you and us both. <laughs> Barry, one more question. Um, and I, what's the projection for uh, next fiscal year as far as decrease in revenue? That's a great question, um, and I don't have a, a great num um, answer for you yet. Um, part of it is this reopening. Um, what's going to, you know, how is our economy going to rebound? Um, the the areas that we're going hit, to get hit hardest in areas that where we have dedicated revenue, penny money, okay, so penny for Pinellas. We're going to really rethink our capital plans. 
um, the CBB bed tax, you know, driven um, there, our gas tax, um, what we use to maintain our rights away and um, all of our public works, environmental management. Um, so those areas will be particularly hit hard. Uh, we, you know, we probably, you know, if I throw out a number and I know Puente's on there, so he'll print it. So uh, <laughs> no offense, Mark, but I don't want to put a number out there that I'll be 100% wrong on, but we're trying to figure that out. I mean, we, you know, it's not a significant part of our general fund mud budget, when, but, but it's still a big chunk of money. And so we're, we're doing projections right now. So what I've told the, the commissioners are that we're, we're going to put that on for early June uh, to be able to have a more um, detailed conversation. I do have on kind of a reopening discussion with the commissioners, both in terms of county operations and, and in terms of the commissioners themselves um, here at, the, at our workshop next Thursday. And, you know, the, part of the reason for that is, you know, like with Brian moderating this meeting, he's done a, an amazing job, but there's a whole team behind him to, to set these up. There's a lot of resources that go into having these online meetings. And we have um, quasi-judicial hearings uh, that we've been, you know, delaying. And those would be some really significant ones where you're going to have hundreds of people wanting to speak. And so um, very, very difficult to do. Um, online like this and have them have a real opportunity to present their case. Um, not, not that we can't do it. I think Joel could, will opine that we can, but it, it become, it's a lot more problematic. Um, so that's, that's kind of the things that we're dealing with. Um, Ken, you and I really need to talk about, you know, and, and Mike and Charles, I mean, you know, we've got, when do we open up the courthouse, right? Um, and what does that look like and what's our messaging on that? So I think all of these, we need to kind of think through that. And, you know, in part, we've been waiting on kind of the governor's order about kind of reopening. And, and um, but, but we, what we do know is that, that that reopening still will involve social distancing for some time. And so if we have those thoughts in mind and our plans in mind, then, then we can coordinate the how and the when and the messaging and what types of operation are open where. Um, I just appreciate maybe when you get a better hand on the figures, maybe we have an appointing authority meeting with the other appointing authorities. Um, and just go over, you know, it, maybe a quick budget lesson on where the pots of money are going to be short next year and where, where we're looking okay. Just be helpful to know. Yeah, general funds, you know, a little over 40 million bucks in sales tax. Um, so, you know, pick, yeah. pick an amount of that. You know, you're seeing 20% of, you know, monthly figures right. uh, um, of, of what the original amount was. Of course, so, we're, we're through the worst of it. That'll that'll give you that'll give you some idea, but I mean it's in the millions, you know. Yeah. So it's not it's not it's not insignificant, um, but it's it, you know where where it really would impact us is a continuation of this to where there's a deflation in the property values, and that would probably take a year or two, Mike, right, for that to kind of catch up for your appraisal process, and that's where we would see um, a like because such a large share of the general fund uh, comes from property taxes. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll be looking at, at sales activity through the back half of the year to see what types of, if any, impacts are hit in the market. I suspect that we will see some that will affect some of our January 1, 2021 numbers. Yeah. Especially on commercial, I would imagine, more than residential, yeah. Mike. <laughs> Correct. So to, so to keep this conversation going, would um, what about the week after next, uh, like the 18th, 19th, 20th, somewhere through there? You want to get a um, an appointing authorities meeting, so and I can send out a note and just ask for people to think through their thoughts, and we could share those ahead of time, and and then at least just have an information sharing um, regarding what everybody's thinking. Good, thank you. Does that sound okay? Sounds good. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for your time. Um, stay safe. Bye bye. You too. Alrighty. Bye bye.